So media influences of um, on aggression and the roles of desensitization, disinhibition and cognitive priming. So this video is going to look at how um, computer games and violent TV and film might result in aggressive behavior and how people might become desensitized, disinhibited or have something that is referred to as a cognitive prime in response to watching violent media. So in terms of computer games, um, lab experiments have consistently found that um, violent computer games do lead to increased aggression levels. So Anderson and Dill found that participants who blasted opponents with, white no uh, with the white noise for longer after they played a violent um, game compared to those who played a slow paced puzzle game. So that suggests that that violent game made them behave in a more of an aggressive way so that they played that white noise for longer. They were more aggressive as a result of watching that. Equally, lab experiments have found consistently that those who watch violent um, films and TV later display more aggressive behaviour than those who don't. And that children who viewed non-violent films Com uh, were compared to those that had watched violent TV and those that had watched the violent films were rated much higher on measures of physical aggression. So that idea that lab experiments have found that aggressive computer games and TV has led to aggressive acts um, in both adults and children. And we have longitudinal studies that also support the idea that aggressive media can lead to aggression. So Anderson et al surveyed children between the ages of seven and nine at two key points during the school year. Now, children who had high exposure to violent video games became more verbally and physically aggressive, but equally it had an impact on their pro-social behaviour. So they were less likely to show um, pro-social behaviour, so acts of kindness towards one another. In terms of films and TV, Huseman studied children between the ages of six and ten and then 15 years later. And they found that habitual early exposure to TV violence um, predicted later adult aggression. So that release relationship even persisted when the possible effects of socioeconomic status, intelligence and parenting styles was controlled. So that is quite shocking really that even 15 years later, those children that had watched violent TV and film were much more likely to engage in, in later adult aggressive behaviour. Equally, meta-analysis have found um, consistent findings. So um, a small meta-analysis on um, found a small increase in, in aggressive behaviour following exposure to violent uh, video games. And then in terms of films and TV, so a meta-analysis of um, 431 studies. Now, 264 of those were children and 167 involved adults and they found that there was a significant effect size for exposure to media violence on aggressive behaviours, thoughts and feelings. But interestingly, they found the short term effects of media violence were greater for adults than children, but children had greater long term effects after watching violent TV and films. So if we were to evaluate this, there are methodological problems with studying um, media influences. So Livingston found that most research is American and has used unrepresentative samples such as male students. Now, this is an issue as the findings from research might not be applicable to other cultures or genders, meaning it could be guilty of being beta bias. As a result, we should be cautious about making general laws about the effects of media violence on human aggression because it might not apply to females or other cultures. Equally, a weakness is the relationship between media violence and aggression has been overstated. So research has found that in studies where aggression was measured, the relationship between media violence exposure and aggression is almost zero. So other studies have only found a small to uh, a medium effect size, and that demonstrates that the link between exposing um, people to media violence and violent behaviour might not be as strong as first claimed. Equally, Ferguson claims that research 
fails to control other variables that might increase aggression. So research might not be as valid as this fault. Equally, we have um, the artificial measure of aggressive behaviour. So delivery, such as um, a noise blast, um, does not reflect real life aggression and how the media influences it. So it lacks ecological validity. It lacks mundane realism. People don't display aggressive acts by playing white noise at one another. So it might not actually explain human aggression. So moving on to the role of desensitisation, disinhibition and cognitive priming. So desensitisation states that regular watching of violent acts of TV means that physical arousal gets reduced and it may even disappear altogether. So that is the idea that people become less likely to have a reaction every time they see a violent or aggressive act on TV. So research suggests we gradually become less responsive to and emotionally concerned by acts of violence because we've seen so many on television. Now, the basis of the, the approach is that we would expect an increase in viewing violent behaviour would lead to an increase in viewers behaving aggressively. Now, it assumes that viewers become less sensitive and less concerned about violence the more they watch it. So we have supporting evidence from Bushman and he found that participants who played violent video games for 20 minutes took longer to respond to someone that was injured in a staged fight. So that implies that playing a violent game produces physical, physiological desensitisation and reduced physiological arousal. So that strengthens the claim that it demonstrates that desensitisation does happen following exposure to violent media. However, most research into the effects of desensitisation have not used representative samples, it tends to use male students once again. So conclusions um, made about generalising it to all viewers and, and including women would be gender biased. It might not be representative of all humans. So if we were to look at some um, questions about desensitisation then. Some people suggest that media influence aggression through desensitisation, evaluate desensitisation as an explanation of aggression. So for this is six marks, I would do two evaluation points. So you've got your supporting evidence by Bushman and then equally you've got your um, unrepresentative sample dues and the fact that it's gender bias and issues surrounding that. Disinhibition then. So this claims that watching and playing violent media legitimises the own individual's use of violence in their own lives. That's because it undermines any sanctions that might be in place that usually inhibit such behaviour. Now, it can have an immediate effect and a long term effect. So violence on TV or a computer game causes a state of physiological arousal that leads to the greater probability of behaving aggressively. Now, equally, in this aroused state, inhibitions are temporarily su suppressed. So people are more likely to behave aggressive because they, ha they aren't having that inhibitions. But equally, in the long term, violence is justified, and particularly if it's left unpunished, the child feels less inhibited about using aggressive behaviour. Now, a strength of this is their supporting evidence. So Goranson showed that people a boxing match. Now, there were two endings. So participants who did not see the negative consequence, so the loser died, were more likely to behave aggressively after viewing the fight than those who did see the negative consequence. So that suggests that disinhibition is more likely when the negative effects are not shown. On the media. So that strengthens the claim of the explanation that media violence is linked to aggression if the negative effects aren't shown. It could have that long-term effect if uh, it is left unpunished. However, 
Research has suggested that it depends on other factors. Younger children are more likely to be affected because they're drawn into high action violent episodes and they don't consider the motives and consequences of violence. So it might be that actually it only explains it in children because they are unaware that it has negative impacts. They, and age is a massive impact because people become better un understanding the consequences of violent behaviour. Now, cognitive priming. Now, this refers to the idea that watching violence leads to people to store memories in terms of a script of violent acts and they will be activated when they are in a similar situation. Now, a script is a stored way of behaving in social situations. So when a person watches a violent program, the viewer is primed to respond in a similar way. Now, cognitive priming by an aggressive stimulus causes individuals to make hostile attributions about behaviours of other people and increases the likelihood of behaving aggressively. So a strength of this explanation is their supporting evidence. So Joseph Hon have found that boys who watched violent television program that involved a communication with a walkie talkie and were later given instructions via a walkie talkie behaved more aggressively than those that received the instructions via a tape. So that suggests that the walkie talkie had acted as a, as a cognitive prime, a script for the children to behave aggressively. Now this supports the explanation as there's empirical evidence to suggest that media can cause people to form scripts and primes about ways to behave aggressively. Now, equally, we have contradictory evidence that suggests that a film or game realism is an important factor and that priming fa uh, effect. So fictional violence in some computer games may not have the same effects because it's not realistic. So there are important factors into taking account when discussing the, the effects of cognitive and the role of cognitive priming on human aggressive in response to watching violent media. Now, briefly explain how cognitive priming in the media might influence aggressive behaviour. That's two marks the idea that it's going to form a script, a cue, a prime about how to behave and people will respond in a similar way, in a similar aggressive way, if they encounter a similar situation.